Uh, before to start my presentation, I also would like to thank all of Oxia members to having me here again. So actually, my company is dealing with based on nanotechnology and up to make some uh, composite materials. So let's think about why we want to develop new materials and also some uh, new idea. Because we can consider for the uh, some environment. We are living in environment, we have to keep this one. So every industry, they want to try to reduce CO2 emissions. So viewpoint from the materials, we can also answer the question. We can save the CO2 uh, emission in, from um, industry pollution something. So for example, if the material is very right, with very strong, and also reasonable price. We can use this material for, especially for transportation machine or airplane and automobile, something like that. It means that we can use also only a few amount of materials. It means that we can reduce the air pollution in gas and energy consuming also. So it means that directly we can save environment. So from this kind of viewpoint, we also necessarily, not only for the strongest and lightweight, but also we necessarily for the multifunctionalities. For example, in some case, we necessarily high thermal conductivity, high electric conductivity. Or some case, we are opposite, some insulate also necessarily. So considering this matter, it's quite difficult to achieve one single material for this kind of all the uh, property. So we can consider, for example, A material and B material. Whatever, it, it, it doesn't matter. Even same metals or ceramics or the hybridized or polymers. So however, we can combine those two materials so in order to achieve uh, multifunctionality with reasonable price. So there are also some several uh, processing methods to achieve this kind of material. For example, uh, sintering and extrusion and lulling, and also we can use some bonding technology. So however, today I'm going to introduce three practical uh, composite materials. So I used this uh, uh, step, for example, the carbon nanotube and metal, met metallic materials and um, mixed together and then go through the extrusion or some case, the sintering. And then finally, we can get very nice and composite materials. So it is, not, it is not only for the only aluminum base, but also we can make aluminum, uh, magnesium, copper, titanium, whatever we can, uh, we want. We can make some uh, this kind of compositional materials for the uh, special application. And then we can use this material for the many kinds of applications, especially for hydraulic or air cylinder and part, and automobile for the air condition, fuel line, and, and so on. And also, of course, the battery ceiling uh, case. Because carbon nanotube has also very nice for the uh, electromagnetic uh, shielding property. So first, I would like to introduce some of uh, practical uh, story, especially aluminum-based single wall carbon nanotube composite for air cylinder uh, body application. So as you can see here, the raw material also powder. It's not for the bulk, bulky state. So aluminum powder and carbon nano powder made, uh, mixed together, and then we uh, through it go to the extrusion method. As you can see here, and it was successfully made. Especially, I named this material some functionally graded aluminum CNT composite material because you can see here the outside is aluminum 6,000 threads, inside 3,000 threads. Those are different properties. In, in, for example, 6,000 threads has high uh, strength, and inside 3,000 has very nice uh, anti corrosion property. So, in this, in the fitting to this material, I added aluminum 3.1% carbon nanotube as a right to some strengthening the property. So successfully, we fabricated in mass production uh, line. 
And then uh, this is just uh, some kind of academic viewpoint of the result. So still we have the aluminum and, and also CNT in here. Uh, also we look it up some uh, interface. Of course, it is, those combination are totally uh, different series because carbon nanotube is kind of ceramic. So ceramic and metallic material is very hard to make some good uh, interface. So we observe in the interface between those material, but we got a very smooth and well uh, interlocked interface in here. So we, of course, in the line profiling, we confirmed the carbon nanotube is still inside there. It's not broken anymore. Uh, also in here, it's very interesting uh, EBSD result. As you can see here, the, just uh, in conventional aluminum 6,000, 3,000 shows a quite uh, big grain size, but inside with aluminum and CNT shows very fine particle, some case in nano order. So this uh, fine particle also enhanced for the mechanical property. So uh, of course that in the TEM, but we have a small amount of aluminum carbide in here. Actually aluminum carbide is not good material for especially electrical or summer uh, application. But in our case, mechanical application, even they exist in small size, nano size, and well distributed, it give also some another uh, strengthening effect. So in our case, at least I can say it doesn't matter. So here is some uh, property of the aluminum. Uh, 60, 63 pure aluminum and carbon nanotube. So compared to these things in our FGM and tube, cylinder tube, uh, incorporated aluminum 6,000 and 3,000 and aluminum CNT gave very remarkable uh, value, especially for elastic modulus. As you can see here, 263. In general aluminum uh, or aluminum alloy shows 70, 70, uh, gigapascal, uh, megapas uh, gigapascal, but in our case, 263, sorry, I, I made mistake in here, it's gigapascal. So uh, let's look at again for the inside microstructure. So we got even in same level, it does, uh, there are no seriously big crack or uh, some pore uh, after a breakdown. And then, however, we found a very interesting uh, area. For example, like this, it may be CNT. Yes, and also aluminum carbide and covered a little bit. But before uh, my previous research, and uh, it was already published in some international journal, I looking, uh, I investigated only this kind of part. What is this? So in this case, I know this one is aluminum uh, and aluminum and CNT. But some case looks like aluminum carbide, but actually aluminum carbide formed outside only. Inside still carbon nanotube survivor. So many compli complex and uh, microstructure uh, formed. So, and then using this technology, we can also make, uh, not for the cylinder body, also we can make some uh, profile application. So, Maybe everybody know about profile. So in here also we got some aluminum profile uh, over there everywhere, and especially for profile uh, using for automation system or some um, um, many uh, equipment and frame, and also solar frame and so on. So in our case, we produced for the uh, aluminum based super profile and I added single world carbon nanotube inside here and then uh, successfully produced also in extrusion uh, process which is mass productible application uh, uh, equipment. So this kind of material we can use building materials whatever we can uh, replace the, even the steel frame the, my final goal is replaced steel frame, so many frame and frame industry as well. So for the semiconductor line and battery, uh, lithium ion battery 
process line and so on, and also uh, radiation shielding material. Depending on the uh, purpose, we can also stop the uh, nuclear radiation and so on, electromagnetics also, and uh, also industrial robot uh, arm application. This is very important because um, high Young's modulus means that it is very difficult to bend. So it means that compared to the general conventional aluminum materials, our super profile has three times higher Young's modulus, means that three times higher uh, bending uh, resistivity. So as like this solar system panel, and uh, maybe aerospace industry, maybe this kind of material, one of nice candidates for the uh, space elevator, which was mentioned in our early uh, NAM conference. And so here, the UTS is not very impressive compared to the just the general aluminum we, before to go to T5 or T6 year and, three and, and, and heat treatment. And in here is just of 140, it means that 20 or 30% increase. It's not very uh, incredible uh, value for me. But in here, again, I, mentioned, I already mentioned that it, um, elastic modulus, Young's modulus is three times higher than conventional uh, aluminum alloy. So it's very uh, remarkable number. So let me summarize also for another, uh, another property not only for mechanical, but summer conductivity. As you can see here, uh, aluminum, and generally for, uh, depending on the cities and quality, we can say around 200 in the value number. But single world carbon nanotube, also depending on the quality, depending on the structure, we can say up to 5,500. It's really a high uh, number. So combining those together, and when I calculated, and uh, this one, one volume percent added in here, uh, theoretically it should be show 253. But in our experimental value, uh, conductivity shows higher than um, theoretical value. But I think, of course, this is including also some error range, but, but it's very remarkable uh, number. It's higher. So when I added single word carbon nanotube, I can control the summer conductivity also. So uh, again, in here, this kind of super profile or cylinder material could be used some frame and profile automation equipment, such as like this kind of uh, a shield frame and also line frame. And, and it's already used all of the industry. So the advantage of the aluminum CNT super profiles improve the structural strength and more lightweight and also can reduce the cost because this one is only added one volume percent or 0.1 volume percent. So the strength in Young's modulus increased three times. It means that you can design even uh, 60, 70% uh, smaller than in conventional as profile thickness. So we can save that part also the cost. And this and also here is some practical application uh, story. And I made some uh, solar frame uh, for in here. So we also analyze analysis using simulation, if the profile shows three times higher Young's modulus conventional materials, it means that when the wind and snow and oscate, whatever the environment change, this kind of super profile frame could be stand at least over three times compared to conventional aluminum alloy. Uh, also, another third application, this one is actually I uh, presented last year. So when we produced aluminum with carbon nanotube with high stress, but I can say the electric, uh, electric conductivity is not highly enhanced in this case, still right now, but we can increase the strength it means that we can reduce the size of this uh, cable. So the electric always follow the surface of cable. It means that even same volume, we can, we can add it a lot of cable line. 
So it means that directly we can increase electric conductivity. It's the same, same meaning. So however, in this case, in, in actually in Korea, we have an, a lot of mountain and 70% of mountain in our territory. So in this case, in general conventional uh, cable, we are using a lot of electric fold and throat this uh, lever and so on. But if this kind of uh, very high strength electric cable, we can across the uh, lever directly. It means that we can save a lot of money. And also, we don't necessarily to break down the environment in here to make an electric fold and so on. So let me summarize our uh, my uh, talk. And this kind of sh um, maybe super not a composite material, of course, is not perfect right now. But at least we can apply some uh, proper applicable industrial uh, material. So, for example, in the future, maybe energy or construction, of course, it's ongoing project, and machinery and transportation. Most of transportation could be changed in mm, near future as uh, electric vehicle. So not only for the automobile, but also airplane and maybe ship and train could be changed. All our uh, electric vehicle and motor system maybe. In that time, if we can apply this kind of supernatural composite, we can save energy and also protect our environment. So uh, I can say at least single world carbon nanotube can uh, used as for some multifunctional new structure material application. So this is my, uh, the end of my story. <laughs>